you could wish for one great innovation, what would, would you wish for? Um, I, I would wish oh, one. Um, <laughs> I, I would wish for the rules and the goals of the fashion sector be, to be changed. In what? To become ones that aren't solely based on economic growth and imperatives and actually become focused on delivering well-being to people. And I think in a simple shift, that, that goal that everyone's striving to would be a different goal and different processes would flow. Not a techie innovation though <laughs> more a is mindset that, is that what you want no yes, but it's so interesting to, because i tend to ask people what kind of innovation they wishing for and very often it becomes something technology but this is more like a mind shift yes, it is. and then and how it you only, do things critically the a shift in mindset takes half a second it, it it doesn't take any money to make it happen it's like a click in the brain it's it's a new way of seeing and thinking and that's what's in its favour. So that leads to another question. When it comes to a tipping point, when or what do you think will create the tipping point when it comes to changing the fashion industry? Uh, I think it's lots of things. It's, um, it's people feeling empty with mindless passive consumption. I think that's part of it. People feeling disenfranchised and disengaged from the whole fashion sector. It's not relevant to me what that is. It's going to be issues to do with water use, energy use, peak oil. These are going to all be squeezing and pressing the price of stuff. And at the same time, people are going to be confused about what's being produced. There's so many levels of problem within fashion. And yet, it has so much promise and opportunity to change. It's such a great communicator. People get it. People have an opinion. It's a fantastic way to communicate sustainability ideas. Um, well, I would, the thing that I would ask it to do would be to reflect on its goals and see whether they're leading it actually to the place they want to go. Because a lot of things happen where you end up having goals or rules that actually don't take you to the direction that you want to be. And so it's realigning those. And I think scrutiny about that would be a great place to start. Um, and then I think you do need, you need um, a checklist of stuff to make it easy for people. You need targets, which is absolutely essential, and that needs to be progressed. But, but above all, I suppose, um, it would be to, to build a literacy within the people who work here. And it's not just the people who are making these decisions, it's also the cleaners and the receptionists. And generally to build a literacy around sustainability where it's in the ether, the blood, the, the DNA of the company. And then fantastic things begin to happen. Large mainstream high street retailer would be Marks and Spencers. They're doing some fantastic things. Mm -hmm. They've rolled out some amazing innovations. Uh, they can do that because they sell only own brand products and so they can control things very carefully. Um, super small scale, there is a company called Keep and Share in the UK and their business is transformed by sustainability ideas. Their whole goal is to produce super durable clothes that can be shared between people to try to reduce consumption. Um, and then there's another fantastic young startup in uh, the north of England, which is called Antiform, and it's based entirely on co-design, designing with people rather than designing for them. And the people there come and they engage in the process and they leave with a garment that they created, they designed, they created, and they will wear. So there's a real sort of breadth and depth to what's going on, and I think it's, it's a real source of hope.